up? It's your boy Carcino, and I get asked a lot of times, what are your top five rap albums? And I was like, man, that is the hardest thing to do because each rap album is different. Some have different vibes, different sounds, and it might be your favorite album, and it's not even... You know, you probably don't like all the songs on the album, but it's still one of your favorite albums. But if I got to say, if you got to go through all the songs, let's do best rap group. Okay? We'll do it that way. Um, Eric B. and Rakim, I consider them, I see them as an individual artist on my charts, even though they're a group. But when it's one person like doing the rhyme all the time and, you know, I'll put P.E. in the group because that's, you know, Flav rap sometimes too. He always had like one song, but even though it was predominantly Chuck, Public Enemy is a group where Eric B. and Rakim, I would consider that individual. So if I see DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, I'm still going to count that as an individual artist. So, in case you hear my list and say, hey, where is that? Where is this? You know, there we go. Now, number five on my list, I have Outcast Southern Playalistic Cadillac Music. From the first song to the last, that was clearly their best album made. They might not agree. They might have other ones they like. But from a musical and lyrical standpoint, that album was superb. Superb. I mean, at the time, when they came in the game with that player's ball and everything else, it was a, a joke to the system because they brought back the smooth sound of like the 70s, like that Mac player. That's, uh, that stuff was gone for a minute. Everything had gotten so hardcore and grimy and there was no place for them anymore in the game. That was like some of the old school penthouse players type stuff. But man, they came through the door like boom. And there it was. <laughs> so number five definitely is uh, Outkast, uh, Southern Playlist. Um. I actually love that song. And I like PPC. That penthouse play is click. Everybody know that. I was a penthouse man. That was my group. I just wish they'd stay busy, you know. Tweed, Cadillac, and play a hand. Now, number four. Hmm. Number four is tough. Uh, low end theory about outcasts. Not outcasts. Uh, Trial Call Quest. Now, I've had this argument a million and one times. People tell me Midnight Marauders and low end theory. Here we go. I've had this argument a million times. And somebody in there is going to post Midnight Marauders. Midnight Marauders is a great album. I have it number six, actually. If we were doing a top ten, it would be number six. Okay? The reason why <laughs> I don't have it any higher is because it is not better than Low End Theory. Just happened to be that way. If you tell me about electric relaxation again, I'm going to drop kick you through the phone. Okay, I've heard this argument a million times. I've argued with every tribe fan, and I had some that agree with me. Then they get into an argument. Look, no argue today. <laughs> Low end theory is still the best album they made. Period. You can like Marauders, and it's okay to like Marauders. I own Marauders too. Okay, it's just facts are facts. That is the best album they've made, and it's number four all time. Okay. 
Now we've got that cleared up. Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> no, don't start because I know what y'all finna go to. <laughs> I like that song too. Don't worry. I like Marauders. I like it all. Now, number three, EPMD Unfinished Business. Aha. Yeah. The second album. EPMD is one of the best groups of all time. Hands down. Now, all of their albums, of course, incorporate with business. They had strictly business, unfinished business, then business as usual, then business never personal, then they had back in business, and then they had out of business. So all their albums was associated with business. And this one was, they came back with a vengeance because they had built up a lot of hate from a lot of fans who was like, oh, they trying to be like Rock Kim. And then they, they had to come out and let people know and get the Bozak was that song. They was just letting y'all have it. Everybody, fans, Rock, anybody in the vicinity was getting it. And I loved it. And I was like, man, this album is awesome. Please listen to my demo. Oh, man, number three all-time greatest album. Okay. Who's Booty? Are you kidding? See, most of y'all probably don't remember when these songs was out. I remember when this song was out. People used to be singing Who's Booty walking down the highway. But um, number two, let's go to number two. Public enemy, take a nation of million to hold us back. Cause the brothers and sisters, hey, <laughs> Chuck D, my man Chuck. There was no group had an impact like Public Enemy. Okay. No group had that kind of, like, brothers coming together. That, you talk X-Clan, you could talk African Bambada. Nobody had a movement like Pete. Believe me, he had adults and kids. Get yourself together, baby. Yeah, I'm together. <laughs> I got my, where my red, black, and green hat at? That's mine. That's not my, mine was red, black, and green. Yours, green, black, and red. We got a difference. People was arguing over that. Where's my African medallion? Where's my African medallion? I had it sitting right there. He took my African medallion. Everybody had on an African medallion. They had red, black, and green. Public Enemy was all down there. It was all about Africa, Africa, Africa. Everybody was, man, got a new hat. Man, he got the new, with the with the suede on the front. Man, he got the smooth suede bill. Red, black, and green hat. Where you get that? <laughs> so, and uh, I'll tell you, those a rads made a killing. They made a killing in the 90s. All Public Enemies. They came in there like, oh, everybody like the Africa. We build Africa stuff. They had red, black, and green. We negotiate three dollars, five dollars. You could take it. <laughs> but the album, Rebel Without a Pause, Terminator X. I mean, some of the best production on the album you're gonna get. I mean, the Bomb Squad came with it. And that's what they did. They dropped bombs on your head. Black Steel in the Hour of Chaos. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> but y'all don't know. That's an inside joke. But the person that's going to see the video going to know it. He's going to crack up laughing. It's about Tribe Called Quest. And that argument I was telling y'all about. Now, there's a thousand honorable mentions. 
okay? BDP's, man, the second CD from BDP. A Boogie Down production by any means necessary. Um, it's on my list in my top 10. But that's that's the one right there. I like that album better than Criminal Minded. Criminal Minded is a great album. It's a good album for its time piece. But some of the production on there was like, it, was, it needed to be tightened. And I swear, by any means necessary, oh my gosh. It was on. <laughs> they had a little money and they had better production. Sophomore, miss him to the top of the game. And then you got uh, honorable mentions to Gangstar. The first CD, definitely. Uh, Hard to Earn. Um, any Mob Deep album. But Murder Music is one of my favorite Mob Deep albums. Because they came with it. My guy like Hell on Earth because of the production on Hell on Earth and P's lyrics. And I like Hell on Earth too. There's a lot of them, a lot of groups that's flowing around right now. A lot of albums. Uh, woo, Ghetto Boys, We Can't Be Stopped. And the one after that, the one that didn't have Willie D on it, that was a hard album. And that was, <sighs> Drew played that CD to death. Uh, I know I played it to death. Had that song on there, it ain't it. I just can't think of the name of it and that straight gangsterism. But that was a hit. Uh... Man, they had what? They had the Butter Law, Cypress Hill first CD. It's a lot of great CDs. EPMD will be right back in the mix, right along with Fear of a Black Planet, which is also in my top 10. Uh, a lot of great albums to name. Uh, one guy gonna tell me about the Fugees. Um, the Fugees. And I was like, I never really liked the Fugees 1 through 12. They don't have that 1 through 12 in them because they always trying songs out and to see if they work. And I felt like a lot of it didn't. I tell you, uh, the Roots. That uh, that uh, first album from the Roots. I remember my cousin played that. I'm like every track, every track, just as hard as the last. Uh, Third Eye Blind by Hieroglyphics, definitely. Opie is one of the, even though it's a short song, one of the best beats made um, by Hieroglyphics. A lot of them, <laughs> especially on Third Eye Blind. And shoot, there's so many to name, man. I mean, so please forgive my brain. I can't. I mean, Black Moon is up there. Uh, Black Sheep is up there. Black Moon and Black Sheep is up there. The greatest rap album of all time. Um, Showbiz and AG. Runaway Slave. That's up there. Uh, man. Dude, it's so many. But let's go into number one. Number one is Run DMC Raising Hell. Do I even need to explain why? <laughs> Run DMC Raising Hell is up there 
because of the simple fact, run DMC, that's it, run DMC. They op that album broke the door. It broke it down. It showed you where you could go as a rap group, where you could go as a performer. It was sky's the limit. There'd have been no LL Cool J bands. It'd have been nothing if it wasn't for that album. And the album, no NWA, you wouldn't have seen any of it if it wasn't for Run DMC, Raising Hell. Raising Hell opened the door for rap when rap was finna be just put out as a hobby. They weren't gonna put no more money in the rap. No big money, no spot, nothing. It was just dying out because everything was sounding the same. It was nothing different. It was like, it's good, but well, it's some homeboy. Wasn't going to take it to the next level. Walk this way. Of course. That was it. That was a make or break for rap. Either their fans was going to accept it or not. And they did. <laughs> and the rest of the album. No joke. Tricky. Peter Paul, Peter Piper rather, not Peter Paul. Peter Piper, dumb girl, are you kidding me? Anybody who had a car rolled down the block and blew the block up when they was driving. Anybody who had a boom box walking down the streets blew the block up with that album. There is no doubt about what's the number one album of all time. More albums was written based off listening to Raisin to Hell than any other rap album of all times. That's a fact. I didn't forget y'all. I did tell y'all I was going to tell y'all who was writing songs to what album that inspired them to continue to do that. I just don't know if it's enough to make a video off of, but we'll do it. All right, I'm out.